Dr. Miller with a quick journal club. Uh, this one is drop set training elicits differential increases in non-uniform hypertrophy of the quadriceps and uh, quadriceps and leg extension exercise by Vorovic uh, et al. Schoenfeld is the senior author. So if, if that title was too fast. This is what it's about. Um, does a drop set elicit greater gains in strength and hypertrophy than traditional training or um, is traditional training better? And uh, I think interesting is, is there regional changes in the skeletal muscle, the muscle's interest um, from different types of training? All right, so let's get into this real quick. Um, I'll try to stay out of the weeds too much here and get to the point. Uh, 24 participants began the study, eight dropped out. They were strength trained individuals. One year of strength training. Uh, how do you define that? The authors didn't, okay? I'm not saying it's bad or good, but just something you got to take into consideration. Leg extension was the exercise used. The um, It was an eight-week study. Really, six weeks of it was more of the training. There was an increase in volume over time. The final week of the study, the uh, individuals did five sets of 15. 15 was the magic rep range for the traditional group. Five sets of 15, three days a week. So three days a week, they did resistance training. So for the first two weeks, the first week, they only did one. And the second week, they only did two. But... Um, there was a traditional training that worked up to adding a set basically per week to five sets of 15, three days a week. Okay. The last week. And then there was a taper week, which was nice. That worked in a lot of times that isn't in there and it messes with strength gains because there's so much fatigue that maybe it was the volume group that saw more strength gains, but the fatigue was so high. You, you miss out when you just test strength right away. So a nice little taper, pull the volume down, uh, three sets and then two sets the last two before testing. All right. So again, leg extension was the exercise here. Single leg leg extension. The the participants were either set into two two separate groups. They trained both the right and left leg with different methods. So if you were you could be in the right leg group was the traditional group, and the left leg was the drop set, or the other group was the left leg, right? The opposite condition, whatever I said there. The other condition was the left leg was traditional, the right leg was a drop set. Okay. The randomized in those two control groups, uh, and to those two groups, uh, you know, who got what leg doing what. Okay. The um uh, the drop set drop sets can take many different definitions. In this case, the drop set though was, uh, working with roughly a five RM. So the load was, uh, one RM was determined with the Brzezicki equation. And then also at the end as well. So it's a prediction prediction equation. If I'm not familiar to as many reps as you can, and we can predict then using this equation, which are not what estimated one RM is. And so these individuals did the, um, uh, did the drop set training in such a way that they did a five RM roughly. And then, um, as many reps as possible, then a 20% decline. And then, as many reps as possible. And then if, I think it was 10 to 15% decline to finish. That was one set. Okay. So they either did that or just 15 reps to failure. And then the load was adjusted set to set. Okay. So, if, you know, the, fifth, the traditional group, if you did 17 reps, you got more load the next set. If you were down to 13, you got more reps. So there's a bracket of 13 to 17 reps. Um, and the drop set group had their load adjusted as well. Okay. So um, that was the two conditions. The um, pre and post test uh, variables of interest was 60 degree isometric knee extension. So how hard could you push on that, push on that thing? Three rep, uh, three reps doing this, right? Very common way of determining strength, uh, or at least isometric strength. And then they did the Przezicki equation, which I mentioned before, as many reps as possible, doing both conditions and then predicting one RM. The authors rightly point out that really the one RM with such high repetitions, the closer, the closer you are to one RM, the more predictive it is, right? The further away from one RM you are, the less predictive, the more error you introduce. And so, um, the, the authors rightly point out this may be more of a muscle endurance test than a true one RM. So it might mask actual strength gains in a one RM um, because you didn't use a one RM. You're doing high repetition type of stuff to predict anything over 10 reps really introduces a lot of error. Okay. All right. So the three outcomes though, were the Brzezicki equation predicted, there was two, uh, both an average and in a peak force uh, that was from the maximal, maximal voluntary isometric contraction. And then the, the two hypertrophy and, um, uh, the two muscles of interest for hypertrophy were the rectus femoris, these are quad muscles, and vastus lateralis. The authors then, um, I think really interestingly, looked at the muscle, 30% of the muscle length, so they imaged it. This was an ultrasound that could image the actual muscle thickness. It's 50%, and then at 70%, so closer to the knee. So 30% is, is more proximal, 70% is more distal, 50 is in between. And they did this both for rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis. Did this study for seven weeks, um, eight weeks, excuse me, really six weeks of training, and then looked at the results. So Pre and post, there was no changes in the two, between the two groups, okay, between the two groups now, there was no changes in muscle, a maximal voluntary isometric contraction and the predicted 1RM. Now, there was a change in both of them in predicted 1RM and maximal voluntary isometric contraction. So there was improvements in both, but there was no group differences. So n neither method was superior over the other, 
when you look at the hypertrophy though, this gets interesting. I'm gonna start with vastus lateralis. So the vastus lateralis, only the 30% of muscle length um, saw a time effect. So in other words, saw a gain in, in size. Um, but there was no difference between the groups at the different regions. And in fact, there was no difference in muscle size for either one of these type of, uh, for either method at the 50% and 70% group. So only at 30% was there a gain in vastus lateralis muscle size. If you actually look at the percentages, okay, so if you look at the raw data, so statistical significance is important. Obviously, we got to draw the line in sand somewhere, but you still don't have, you don't have to turn your brain off and not think just because of that. Variance will determine like how big the sample spread was and the out results will, and how many people we have will determine whether we get statistical significance. So there was a lot of variance um, in the samples. But if you just look at the percentages, the drop set group at the 30% saw an increase of 8.1% in vastus lateralis side at 30% of muscle length. The traditional group was 5.2. So there was a roughly 3% increase in vastus lateralis cross-sectional area in the drop set group. Okay. In the 50%, of muscle length of vastus lateralis, the traditional group was 6.6% increase, and the, the drop set group was 3.8%. By the way, there are effect sizes worked in here as well. I'm not going to note those just so we don't get bogged down with a lot of numbers, but on average, the effect size is around 0.5, which is um, not a strong effect, but it's, it's, it's a moderate effect. Okay, so it's interesting. There are some that are not as interesting, but it's interesting. Um, and then the vastus lateralis at 70% of muscle length was 8.9% uh, drop set and 7.9% in the traditional. Okay, so they're pretty close. But if you look at the 50% length and the 30% length, drop set might have been, may be superior in proximal uh, gains in proximal side, uh, the proximal end of the muscle. Muscle gains may be enhanced by drop set. And at 50%, the middle muscle might be better for traditional. That's interesting. Okay, that, that was not significant though. If we look at rectus femoris though, all right, so keep that kind of in mind that, that, dis, that the drop set training may be better to train proximal. Um, ends of the muscle, okay, or see hypertrophy changes at a regional, hypertrophy changes at proximal end of the muscle, closer to the hip. The, the rectus femoris, though, saw increases in muscle size for both groups, so the time effect was significant. Um, the um, drop set, so we look at 30% first, so I don't lose you here, 30% of muscle length, so closest to the hip, there is a 17.7% increase in muscle size in rectus femoris at the 30%, so for the proximal end of the muscle, there was a 3% increase. So that was a statistical significance between the two groups. Drop set training was superior to traditional training in inducing proximal, um, so producing hypertrophy or gains in muscle size at the proximal end of the rectus femoris. 17.7%. That was an effect size of 1.2. That's, that's big. Uh, 50%. The um, it was significant difference between the two groups as well, and the drop set group produced an 8.3 percent increase versus the traditional 3.6. And finally, at 70 percent, it was not significant between the two groups. There was a change in, in size, though. The drop set group would produce 7 percent, and the traditional of 8.4 percent. So, what does this look like? Well, it's possible that the um, for the rectus femoris and even for the vastus lateralis, which was not significant, that proximal changes were um, the greater proximal changes to the muscle size with um, the drop set training. So the drop set training, you know, what, and the authors hypothesize why this may be, but the drop set training just may be more stress on the muscle, right? The more more stress by going to failure with these higher loads, higher volume loads, which I'll talk about in a second, um, may produce greater gains in muscle size of proximal area. This is stuff that I'm really interested in because you don't see too much of this. This is really cool. Um, you know, how do we get regional changes in the muscle? It's possible. It looks like it's possible here. That's why I think the study is so important. Um, so just to, again, to summarize that, if you kind of, if I kind of lost you, the drop set method of going heavier than dropping the load over time seemed to produce greater gains in muscle size in the proximal end of both muscles. Statistically significant only in the rectus femoris though. So I don't get myself in trouble with the stats police. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, pushing, you know, higher load may be helpful. Now, one thing that I had a hard time with this study was looking at the total volume and I should have reported this earlier because it's important. Right, this is the main driver. Well, these are things we debate about with hypertrophy. Is what's the driver? It seems, it seems to be volume. Well, the, the authors that I can't I can't find where they put how many t total volume was. I mean, you can assume it based on the sets and reps. But um, the authors did report that there was no statistical difference between volume volume between the two groups. And I'm assuming that was weekly. Okay, it says total differences in total training volume. So maybe that was total for the whole the whole shebang, the whole eight weeks. Okay. But it was not statistically different. So in other words, the 75 reps was the last week, you know, 75 reps per day in the last week, 75 reps was 75 reps 
roughly between the two groups. There wasn't a big difference. What was statistically significant was the volume load, was the volume load. So adding not, not just sets and reps, but adding the load in there. So the load used per set. So um, there was a statistically significant difference in the drop set volume load. So what you can see here is why volume is important, and it is for hypertrophy. There's no doubt about it. Load still could be a, a significant importance when it comes to maybe regional changes in the skeletal muscle because of the amount of tension that's put on the muscle, uh, because of the amount of metabolic stress that's put on the muscle. Um, whatever it may be, uh, if the volume was the same, that means the tension obviously was higher on average in the drop set group. That higher tension then produced greater gains in muscle hypertrophy on the proximal ends of the muscle. So what's the take home from this? Um, I have no idea. Now, what's the take home is change the load. <laughs> right? I mean, this kind of goes back to what we already uh, do or hopefully are doing in, in, in training is um, there is value in having higher loads with volume and there's value in having higher volume with lighter loads, right? So if you do sets of six, there's value in that as well as doing sets of 12. The downside of doing sets of six is you're gonna be restricted in how much volume you can do, total volume, right? Um, in a traditional, now this was to failure, this was on a leg extension, but if you do this with a back squat, it's gonna be much more difficult to do to recover from. Neurologically, joints are gonna feel terrible, right? This is why bodybuilders use machines though. But if you're using machine isolation type of work, it may be valuable to do like a drop set type of method, at least occasionally, worked in where you do a set to failure or even more than that, like this one sets to failure where you're adding a set, you know, sets to failure to the point where you're increasing the load and the volume together. Okay. Um, it's possible, you know, that, um, the construction of the rest periods are in play here. There's a lot of things going on, but I think it's interesting just when you look at the study in its totality, it just supports this idea that you want to run through not only the high rep, moderate, low load stuff, but you probably want to spend some time in the higher load range as well. And that's around the sixes or so for a lot, even for some of the, um, again, this study was in, um, a very large muscle mass. Okay. So I don't know if this apply to biceps and things like that. That's if you ever done a six RM biceps, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty brutal. But the point is, is that, um, and you could do it a drop set method. You could do six RM and lower to low to get, you know, do the same type of method. I don't know, but in a large muscle mass, like the quads, maybe a beneficial way to train. And again, safety wise, not going to be probably a good idea for a squat, a back squat, but it could be really good in a leg extension machine or another machine where it allows you to, con to have a construction that um, you can do a drop set safely and not hurt yourself or not. It's not as technical to the point where you hurt your back or whatever. All right. So the limitation of the study, absolutely. I just mentioned one right there, exercise selection, but very interesting. Um, the I, I find it fascinating that there could be regional changes. And this is the first time I've really seen this conclusively that there's regional changes in skeletal muscle size based on the type of training that's done. I mean, think about in the rehab setting, you know, like I'm trying to restore vastus medialis after a knee injury and that muscle just dries up, you know, how can, what's the best way to do that? Right. And maybe we start tinkering around now with trying to figure out um, how we can change muscles, the region of the muscles. It may be that, you know, when it comes to, trying to hit the attack, the proximal end of a quadricep muscle, at least when it comes to the leg extension, that um, doing a drop set method and creating that kind of metabolic stress with the higher load is going to be more beneficial than doing um, a moderate load to, uh, in a traditional way. All right. All right. Hopefully you found this valuable. If you did like the video, subscribe to my channel. Um, I think it was journal club 22. Check out the other ones I have uh, in other videos, book reviews, all kinds of fun stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.